Hi, I'm Dr. Jana Choi, Medical Director at CCRM New York. I wanted to spend a few minutes with you today to talk to you about how you can best prepare for your initial telehealth consultation with your CCRM doctor. Some of you might be wondering why, of all times, while I'm sheltering in, do I even need to be thinking about scheduling a first-time fertility doctor appointment? And I'd argue that when you're going through the throes and the long road of suffering through infertility or miscarriages, or if you've been thinking for months or years about whether or not you want to actually move forward with a fertility preservation cycle, whether it's egg or embryo freezing, that um, oftentimes people will think, oh, I can just go see my doctor and get started the next day. It actually takes more time from the time of your first consultation until you actually initiate the appropriate treatment. It can sometimes take a month or two or three to get going. So now might actually be the best time to start uh, with the first step. Now how best to prepare for your initial telehealth consultation? One of my nurse teammates smartly suggested that uh, you think about writing down all the questions you have before the appointment. Because it can be disconcerting when talking to a doctor, particularly when you're looking into a webcam, about uh, to think about all, remembering all the questions or discussion points you wanted to review. If you're working with a partner with regards to moving towards having a family, you may also want to make sure that your partner is available because your doctors will want to review not just yours, but your partner's medical and family and surgical history. And it also helps to have an extra set of ears to listen in and try to remember all the key points of your discussion. In terms of preparing additionally, if you've gone through prior fertility tests elsewhere and or prior fertility treatments, you may want to gather that information as well so you can review them in detail with your physician. And that way you can help your CCRM doctor better tailor your needs and your future care. During the conversation, your doctor is going to ask you about past and present medical issues. And this is really important because let's say you have uh, hypertension or diabetes or severe asthma or migraines or auras. Your doctor may actually want you to, to consult first with your specializing physician who's taking care of that particular medical remission before you start going through active fertility treatments to make sure that your health is as stable and as safe as possible. Similarly, if you're on any specific prescription medications, your CCRM doctor may want you to consult with a prescribing doctor to discuss the potential safety concerns associated with that medication use during fertility treatments and during pregnancy. A question people will frequently ask me during our initial conversation is, what can I do to try to optimize my fertility outcomes starting now? And part of our conversation always touches on lifestyle habits. I ask patients about caffeine consumption, alcohol use, tobacco and vaping and uh, recreational drug use. And do counsel that if they are using, for instance, tobacco, marijuana, vaping, that they try to work on cutting those substances out of their life because that may actually help improve their present and future fertility. Similarly, uh, women who are heavy caffeine consumers, I'll try to counsel them to reduce their caffeine intake as that's been associated in some studies with a higher risk for pregnancy loss. A little bit of caffeine though is okay. Um, another question people will ask me is, you know, should I be taking any special supplements now in preparation for pregnancy or in preparation for an upcoming fertility treatment cycle? Um, I counsel all women to be on a folic acid pill at least 400 micrograms a day up to one milligram a day and it's frequently part of most women's multivitamins and prenatal vitamins. The reason for this is there are numerous good medical studies now showing that women who consume folic acid in the appropriate doses both pre and during the pregnancy are much more liable to have healthy babies and it seems to help decrease the risk of having a baby with a spinal cord or a brain defect. And there are actually now studies suggesting that it may possibly also help reduce the risk of autism. So another good reason to start that up if you aren't already on a folic acid supplement. Recent studies have also linked low vitamin D levels with fertility issues. And so if a patient is low in vitamin D, I'll counsel her to not only get a little bit of sunlight exposure each day, 15 minutes, uh, because that helps your body's ability to make naturally uh, to convert vitamin D, but I'd also encourage those women to take an over-the-counter vitamin D3 supplement orally um, and it's safe to take in pregnancy. So you and your doctor can discuss what might be the appropriate dose for you with regards to that. Um, Omega-3s seem to help improve um, fetal brain development and so women who are trying to get pregnant, I'll encourage them to make sure that their pre 
any other vitamin has um, some additional omega-3 as well. During the conversation, you and your doctor will also discuss potential lab work and testing for you and if you have a partner, your partner, prior to starting any kind of treatment. And that can be scheduled in an efficient office visit. And yes, most of our CCRM offices are up and running still. Um, but we're also abiding by CDC guidelines to try to maintain your safety and our staff's safety during this pandemic. What this means is uh, all appointments are um, carefully phone triage before you even walk in the door and patients who have had recent exposure or recent symptoms suggestive of COVID are asked to actually defer their appointments in the office until it's been at least uh, two to four weeks. In our CCRM New York office, we're also abiding by New York City Department of Health guidelines for healthcare facilities and screening everyone's temperature before they uh, enter the front door, both staff and patients. Um, we're trying to stagger and space apart patient appointments to maintain the social distancing that's so important during this time. And we're increasing the frequency with which we sanitize and wipe down common high touch areas in our lobby, in our patient rooms, in our waiting area. So that's it for your initial consultation. I look forward to hopefully meeting some of you in the very near future. Um, please feel free to reach out to your local CCRM office if you have any other further questions. And above all else, please stay safe. Thanks so much for your time.